Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 5th, 2017. Just want to uh, apologize to Jadavius White. I'm not in the business of that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, so let me ask all of you. It's the Cooner Country poll question du jour, as the French would say, of the day. Sponsored by Bill Kelly Financial Services. Should Rob Gronkowski, a.k.a. Gronk, have been suspended? Should he have been suspended for that supposed dirty hit that he applied to the Buffalo Bills player? If you believe the answer is yes, text the letter A to 680680. If you believe the answer is no, Jeff, this is football, text the letter B to 680680. As always, you can vote online at WRKO.com. So let me just say this right out of the bat. I am boycotting the NFL. I don't watch the NFL. I have not watched a game in a long time, months and months and months. Ever since they started kneeling for the national anthem and disrespecting the flag and our vets, I'm done. So I did not watch the Patriots-Buffalo Bills game on Sunday, which the Pats won 23-3, to but let that go. However, I do a lot of reading. As I'm reading, I'm reading a lot of the local media as well as the national media, and everybody, locally and nationally, is talking about this supposed dirty hit that Gronk leveled on this Buffalo Bills defensive back. And everybody's saying, oh, it was so dirty, it was so vicious, it was so, I mean, just so uncalled for. And anyway, so, um, okay, so Gronkowski apologized, but no, that wasn't enough, and he got a one-game suspension. But across the country, they wanted two games, three games, four games. In the local media, especially the Boston Moonbat Globe, some were even saying, listen to this, that Gronk, had he done this on the street against somebody, would, in their words, Dan Shaughnessy, that was his column, uh, came out and said, he would go to jail. He would, he would go to prison if he did this to somebody on the street. And I'm reading all of this, and I'm like, it's football. Everything they do to each other on the field, if you did it on the street, they would go, you would land in jail. If I'm running full steam and I put my shoulder right into your chest, and I tackle and ram you into the ground, uh, I'm going to go to jail. In football, it's the game. It's a contact, a very physical, violent contact sport. It's like boxing or MMA. Okay, like the UFC, there was a knockout, by the way. Ooh, ooh. There was a knockout at the UFC over the weekend. Ay, ay, ay. ay. It was like something out of Mortal Kombat. Ay, yai yai. You do, if, if I'm on the street and I do what they do in the boxing ring or in the uh, uh, UFC or mixed martial arts, I would go to jail. I know. That's the point, genius. That's why you have these contact sports. What's illegal outside is legal inside, whether it be the ring or, in this case, the football field. But it doesn't matter. What Gronk did was unacceptable. Gronk apologized. Did he apologize enough? Patriots fans, don't defend him. You can't defend him. How dare you defend him? And I got to say this, okay? So I watched it on YouTube. I didn't see the game. I don't watch the game. I said, I got to see this. And so I watched the YouTube video. Brittany says to me, Jeff, did you see that hit on the YouTube? Because everybody's talking about it. I go, yeah. She goes, is it me or was it really much ado about nothing? I said, you know, Brittany, I got to tell you, I completely agree with you. So we saw the video again together yesterday. And then we saw it again. And then we saw it a third time. And then Jared, who's you know been with ESPN and he's been with EI, I said, Jared, I mean, did you see the hit? Oh, yeah, I saw the hit. So we took a look at the hit again. So I don't know if it's the angle that I'm looking at. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. But I've seen it on YouTube now at least half a dozen times. Was it a cheap shot? Yes. What the referee should have done? Throw up the flag 15 yards and eject him from the game. Okay, that's it. He basically, there was a pass. 
He was clearly being held. Constant interference. How he wasn't called for pass interference is beyond me, but let that go. The ball is intercepted. Gronk is upset because they're always holding him. There's always constant pass interference. It's been going on for years. Everybody in the NFL knows it. He loses his cool and says, I've had it. And so as the guy's on the ground after he's intercepted the ball, we have, by the way, we have the link up on WRKO.com so you can see the actual hit yourself and judge for yourself. Okay? So Gronk kind of like takes a couple of baby steps and then launches himself. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it was just the way it was done. He launches himself onto the player who's on the ground on his back, and as he's flying into him, kind of gives him like an elbow, more in the back of the back than in the back of the head. So, yeah, you know, Gronk is 265. I think this guy was, what, 190, 200, whatever it was. So, yeah, it was a cheap shot. Yes, you throw the flag. You know, uh, it's a foul, un unnecessary roughness, whatever. 15 yards, he's ejected from the game. End of story. Instead, he's got to apologize. The team has to apologize. He gets a one-game suspension. Everybody's going on. Did you see the hit? It's a chilling hit. It's a frightening hit. It's unacceptable. Oh, my God. You would, you'd go to jail if you did this out on the street. And I'm like, has everybody lost their minds? This is the wussification of the NFL. To me, it's part of the wussification of America, if you want me to be perfectly honest with you. And what the hell ever happened to the New England Patriots fans? You guys used to be like, you know, real partisans and real defenders of the Patriots. And these fans are just taking this lying down. As, as they're roasting this guy, crucifying this guy in the media. Because I'll tell you what the hypocrisy here is. I was reading Drudge this morning. There was the Monday night game. You want to talk about violence. I didn't see the game. I just read stories about it. The Steelers and the Bengals, I think they were going to kill each other last night, from what I read. That, that wasn't a football game. That was almost like two gangs meeting on a, in, a, in, a black, in, a, in a dark alley and just saying, we've got helmets and shoulder pads and that's about it, and let's go. Let's just go at it. I mean, from what I've read, we're lucky somebody didn't get killed last night. It's football. It's grown men who pump weights, who play a very aggressive contact sport. I played football in high school. They cheap shot each other all the time. I'm not excusing cheap shotting. Okay, there's penalties. If it's really egregious, you eject them, whatever. But throwing an elbow to the back of some guy at his back or whatever, and everybody's acting like this is somehow the crime of the century? Are you freaking kidding me? Ray Rice knocks his girlfriend out, no helmet, no protection, no padding, in an elevator. You've got these players who are beating the hell out of their wives and girlfriends. Some of them, like Ray Lewis, were involved in a gunfight in which somebody died at a nightclub after the Super Bowl. No problem. Some guy takes a hit takes a, a cheap shot at a, a Buffalo Bills player, and all of a sudden, everybody's apologizing, and it's mea culpa, and Kronk is just not that kind of a guy. He just doesn't give cheap shots. I feel so bad for him. His image has been tarnished. Guys, are we playing football, or are we going to play flag football? What, is this ballet, or is this football? Okay, he lost his cool. What do you expect? These are 250, 300 pound warriors, titans, who go at it for 60 minutes and sometimes they lose their cool. Hello? Hello? But to me, the deeper point is this, okay? This to me is the deeper point. Gronkowski, for throwing himself, lunging himself, and giving an elbow to a supposedly defenseless player on the ground, has to go out and apologize and is raked over the coals 
by the national liberal sports media and by the local liberal sports media. And yet, Colin Kaepernick can kneel during the national anthem and disrespect our flag, disrespect our anthem, spit on our veterans and those who fought and died for our country, not only is he not given a game suspension or all the other players that have joined, they have made him the GQ Citizen of the Year. GQ has made him the Citizen of the Year. ESPN has made him the athlete or whatever, the Citizen of the Year. To the Boston Globe, he's a hero. To the local media, he's a hero. To the national sports media, he's a hero. So, there you are, poof, spitting on the graves of all of those who fought and died for his freedom, frankly, for him to make so much money. By the way, he's got another book deal coming out, but let that go. For these players to make 10, 15, 20, 25 million dollars a year. To give the middle finger to the country, to the flag, to the anthem, to our vets, to our history, to our tradition, to, to the country, to America. Jeff, no problemo, baby. No problemo. You're the citizen of the year. But a grown man giving a cheap shot in a football game played by other grown men who are paid tens of millions of dollars to whack each other left, right, and center and hit each other and tackle each other, suddenly this guy's got to go out to apologize. And they're... Uh, tar and feathering this guy. They're publicly crucifying him. I'm looking at this and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Something is very seriously wrong here. By the way, have you guys never seen a, 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 an NHL hockey game? You haven't seen all the cheap shots that go on in hockey over the last 40 to 50 years? I mean, what Gronk did to that player is like peanuts. Peanuts, like a choir boy compared to what these NHL players do to one another. Let me just make one final point, and then I want to throw it open to you. Because I know many of you say you're boycotting, but I don't believe you. I think many of you are still watching secretly. Maybe you feel a bit guilty about it, but it doesn't matter. I believe that many of you are still watching the games. Just my opinion. 617-266-6868. Let me just say this. The big argument they're making is... He could have been seriously injured, the Bills player, okay? White. White could have been seriously injured. He could have had a major concussion. He could have broken his neck. He could have broken his spine. He could have broken his back. But he didn't. In other words, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Well, it didn't. You know? So, Tom Brady goes back to pass. You've got a linebacker. 265 pounds, goes through on a blitz, is, let's say is not guarded, takes a, got a clean shot at Brady, he hits him full force trauma, baby. He could break, you know, he could give him a concussion, he could break his spine, he could break his back. That's the risk of the game. That's why they put on the helmets, the shoulder pads. It's a contact physical game. Was his spine broken? Yet. Was his back broken? Yet. So what's the problem? Now, it's a cheap shot. I'm not saying you should have cheap shots. 15-yard uh, penalty flag. Eject him from the game if you have to. It's football. Let's move on. See you next week. Instead, what you're seeing now is the feminization of the NFL, the wussification, I believe, of the New England Patriots, and I hate to say this, but to all the New England Patriots fans, I'm disappointed. I thought you were a little tougher than this. 617-266-6868. Brittany, agree, disagree. I know you're a big Pats fan. You claim you don't watch the games. I was a big Pats fan. You Jeff. were a big Pats fan. You claim that you don't watch the um Well, the I games. don't. I haven't watched the games all season. Um 
But, you know, like I said to you yesterday, we watched the the YouTube video, and I thought it was kind of ridiculous. I It looked like he was just belly flopping on top of the guy. I mean, it was a little ridiculous. And I agree with you, Jeff. There's a double standard here. These guys are not suspended for kneeling for the national anthem, but yet the, he supposedly does a cheap shot, and he's suspended for a game. And he's got to apologize. And he apologized he's right, to, immediately he's to apologize. yeah, after the game. So... I don't understand why the players that kneeled during the National Anthem haven't apologized to the fans, seeing that their viewership is down and ticket sales are down now. Um, so I just think there's a double standard here. And, <laughs> I mean, it's I think it's ridiculous, Jeff. Uh, are you with me or you think no, I'm going... I'm, no, I'm with you. Do you You're think talking... this is the wussification Absolutely. of football? Absolutely. And, and of the Patriots? Absolutely. What about the fans who are not who don't seem to be rallying around Gronk? Well, I hear the argument, oh, people are excited that Gronk got suspended because he'll be able to rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm like, oh. Oh, you mean for the big game against Pittsburgh? Exactly. So, so there's that argument, which, you know, can't deny if you want the Patriots to win. But, um, yeah, no, I think that this is absolutely the wussification of America and the wussification of football as well in every sport. I mean, t- during the Bruins games, I don't know if you watched the Bees, but you know they stopped the fights right away, Jeff. Like no, the second they no, no, stopped I agree throwing with you. their That's gloves out on the ice, and they're bring, punching each other. Bring back fighting to the NHL. Yeah. I thought the game was much better when they allowed to just let them go and let them fight. I mean, think about it. Like the MMA and boxing. What do you want them to do? Just slap? Just like hit each other? Like tag? I mean, it, 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 what's going on here? No, I grew up watching the NHL in the 1970s and the 1980s. And let me tell you, it was a much better product in those days. Oh, they would. No, remember Terry O'Reilly? Remember Terry O'Reilly? Oh, he was a monster for the Bruins. He'd take them all on. I mean, that's what I mean. Bring back fighting and physical play to the NHL. I'm telling you. I'm with you. 617 266 6868. Okay, is this the wussification of football? And I hate to say this. The wussification of the New England Patriots, 617-266-6868. And why am I almost alone, almost alone, in the entire Boston media defending Rob Gronkowski? What the hell happened to the Patriots fans? 617-266-6868. More with your calls. Next. Uh, and, you know, the, the breaking news here, I'm sure Dale's going to ask you yeah. about that. I uh, just came in that uh, Rob Gronkowski suspended one game by the NFL uh, for his hit on Tredavious White. Uh, do you have any comment on what the league has now come out with uh, and said it's a one-game suspension? Uh, no. No, it's their announcement. Um, a lot of times these get appealed, and whether it does or doesn't, I don't know. But at whatever point it's finalized, it's finalized, and that's what it'll be. Boy, I wouldn't want you to go out uh, on a limb there to defend your player, uh, uh, Bill. But anyway, all right, that's Bill Belichick. On with Dale and Holly on WEEI yesterday. CJ, thank you for holding in Rentham. Go ahead, CJ. Jeff, how are you? I'm good. How are you, CJ? Hey, and then, it's BJ, but no big deal. Okay, sorry, I have uh, CJ on the board. My bad. BJ. Here's the deal. So, first of all, it's about Colin Kaepernick. You can't expect the NFL to suspend somebody who's not a football player. He's a private citizen. He doesn't play for the NFL anymore. Uh, he can do whatever he wants, and of course the media's going to love him. They all agree with him. Uh, as for Gronkowski, um, you know, the guy's always, he's the next generation player, and they've, they've definitely allowed other players to cheat against him, hold him, and they've called crap against him that, that just shouldn't be called. As for this specific play, the whistle was blown. The guy is laying there defenseless. He didn't just stu- – it was a stutter step to get momentum going. It weren't baby steps. And he drove his forearm. Listen, I am a Patriots boo to the nth degree. And I'll defend him, you know, the brazes, the placate, all of it. But this was just dirty. And allowing – let him, let the media go and, t- you know, tar and feather him, like you said. Take the one-game suspension because it's going to save his – Persona. It's going to stay because everybody always thought he's a fun loving, nice guy. He just loved playing football. And now all of a sudden he's done something that could define him. If, if they let if he just got off with nothing, $1,000 fine or whatever, they, this would haunt him for the rest of his career. People across the country who are jealous of the Patriots would be like, oh, dirty player. But with this, one game suspension, 
He apologized. He's done everything right. He's going to be able to save face, and people are going to forget about this one incident. He's never done anything like this before. He's been in the NFL, and he's never done anything like this. He's always handled it in between the start of the play and the whistle. I mean, he played this Pittsburgh Steelers. He was fed up with uh, this D-back who was just riding them all game, and he drove them right into the uh, camera scaffolding. It was insane, but it was legal. This was just dirty. I mean, well, it was a cheap was... shot. No, look, BJ, there, there's no question about that. My point is just this. I'm not talking about Kaepernick now. I'm talking about Kaepernick, you know, when he was playing in the league, and I'm talking about everybody else who's been following in his footsteps. They never have to be made to apologize for kneeling during the national anthem, which has cost the game tremendously. I'm talking revenue, TV ratings, stadium attendance, never mind how utterly offensive it is to the vets and to, the vets and to most people. And I look at a guy like Gronk, and I agree with I you. Played I've played football for 20 years, and I'm a veteran. I can't stand it. The only team I'll watch is the Patriots. Oh, yeah. No, no, BJ, look, uh, I hear you. And by the way, thank you for your service, BJ. God bless you, my friend. No, look, uh, look, I agree with you. If you see the play, look, I don't want to turn this into inside football. How many times was White holding him? And by the way, I noticed that with Gronk all the time. They keep holding. It's past interference. Pushing him, holding him, tugging him. So I think what happened, to be honest, and that was so egregious on that play. Now, should they have been throwing the ball with less than five minutes to go with a 20-point lead? That's another story, but let that go. All I'm just saying is this. You watch the play, and it's like he's being held. He's being interfered, he's being tugged, he's being shoved, he's being pushed, and they do it to him again and again and again and again. And I think the guy just lost his cool. I think he just said, this is like, and he's looking around to the ref, where's the flag? There's no flag? This SOB gets the interception? You know what? Bang. Bang. Now, I'm not defending what he did. I'm not saying, hey, cheap shot everybody. What I'm saying is this. Okay, a lot of cheap shots in the NFL. Did you watch the game? I don't watch the NFL anymore. This was, I think, a year ago, two years ago. Don't quote me on this. Two years ago. Okay, Jared got it. Two years ago. The playoff game between the Steelers and the Bengals. What was the linebacker's name, Jared? The guy, the, the, the Bengals. Burfecht. Okay, Burfecht. That wasn't a football game. That was war with men with helmets and pads. Personally, I think it's one of the best games I ever saw in my life. They were killing each other on that field. And you want to talk about cheap shots. The whole game was one long cheap shot. Kicking, punching. There was one play near the end. Ro okay, sorry, Brittany. Roethlisberger throws the ball to the receiver. Burfecht with the shoulder right to the head, to the helmet, knocks him out cold almost could have killed him with that hit personal flag i think he's ejected they move the ball up anyway pittsburgh ends up on because of that huge mistake they end up winning the game what i'm saying is this this is football perfect wasn't trotted out oh you've got to apologize and this kid could have killed somebody and this is the end of the nfl and the nfl is in crisis and what i'm trying to say is there is a blatant double standard. And to me, it starts to show the wussification of the NFL. Sports has had cheap shots and dirty plays for decades. You don't have to make the players apologize. You eject them. End of story. See you next week. If you can kneel for the national anthem and be called a hero, then you shouldn't apologize for giving somebody a cheap shot. Just my opinion. Let's take it now to Evan Heidenrich. The president is praising the tax bill. Evan Heidenrich has the latest in the WRKO newsroom. Thank you, Jeff. Boy, that was Larry King. <laughs> I mean, uh, talking about his prostate. <laughs> Six, ay, ay, ay. 617-266-6868 is the number. I didn't say anything. I just said it was Larry King. That's all I said. Okay, you can text us at 680-680. This is from 603. Jeff, within 10 years, they'll be wearing tutus and playing flag football. It's heading there, slowly but surely. Uh, 617. 
<laughs> Jeff, death penalty to Gronk wouldn't be good enough for the moon bats. <laughs> 781. Jeff, look at NHL hockey now. There's no more fights. They get called for everything. Uh, the whole sport sucks now. No, I, it's all these chippy penalties now. They don't let the players play. Uh, I thought it was a better game, honestly, in the 70s and 80s. Just my opinion. You may disagree. Uh, 617. Jeff, Gronk is a man-child playing among boys. And because of that, the refs are less likely to call fouls on him the same way they never call fouls on LeBron James or Michael Jordan. It's true. And the guy just said, enough's enough. And so we gave him an elbow. <laughs> All right, so, Brittany, the poll question of the day is, should Gronk have been suspended for one game for that dirty shot, that cheap shot that he took against the Bills' defensive player? If the answer is yes, text the letter A to 680680. If the answer is no, text the letter B to 680680. As always, the poll question is powered by Bill Kelly Financial Services. You can vote online at WRKO.com. What are the results thus far, Britain? These results are shocking, Jeff. <laughs> 78% say yes, Gronk should have been suspended. No, I'm telling you. And then 22% say no, he shouldn't have been suspended. <laughs> I mean, How know, are we in the minority on this? No, what I happened know. to our audience? Well, I know, what's happened? <laughs> I, really, honestly. And the other thing is, they always go on about, oh, the Patriots fans are like fanatics. Oh, they're such partisans, and they defend their team no matter what. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ask Gronk, because he's not feeling the love. Paul in Dorchester. Go ahead, Paul. Dave, Jeff, I'm with you on this one. It should have been a B. He should have never been suspended. I can see why you feel that way because they've been after the Patriots for years from Spygate, Deflategate, even the ineligible receiver or eligible receivers. The coaches are smarter, so the teams, the other teams can't keep up with the smart coaches of Bill Belichick and the players. So they've been after. We had, uh, after us, so we had a target on our back. So plus the 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 uh, Bob Kraft gave up so easily, wrote a million dollar check. We was like, all the fans were like, why is he not fighting for Brady? And it, we just took the four game suspensions, and we still win. That's why I think we're the poster boys uh, for them to keep attacking us. Uh, this is why, um, like I was I was watching football back in the days, Jeff Ronnie Lott from the Forty Niners, oh, and he was a headhunter. Rodney, Rodney Harrison, those guys were brutal. They, I mean, they caused so much CTE, leading with their head. They were beheading people on the field. This is why I think, yes, there's room for, for safety to change the game. And at the same time, too, they can't put flag football on these guys. The, the game, you're just scoring 50 points where I used to watch 13, 13 to 10 games. Now they're blowing the, the scores out because no one's going after the quarterback because they don't want to get fined, suspended, because that's their living. They're making their living, and they don't get paid as much as Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. You just barely touch these guys. You know, um, you, you're suspended, and you, you're getting fined. You know, the game has to change to protect the players, you know, coming across the middle as a safety issue, but there's certain things that you got to let them play. You, got, you, you, they, they, you can't even rough the guy after five yards, you know, it's just... It's just getting too soft for me. Uh, Paul, I'm with you, and thank you for that call. Look, to me, I, I think the game is being wussified. I think the game is being feminized. And in the long term, it's going to kill the NFL, just my opinion. Anthony in New Hampshire. Go ahead, Anthony. Jeff, uh, there's only one thing that gives me more chills than watching a great football game, and that's my patriotic pride for this country. And I think you're wrong. I think that there's a... The, the portion of the fans that were that strong fan support that would defend them till their light dying death last breath are the ones that are defending our country right now and our flag and I'm watching the game. I didn't see the game. I won't watch the game and I won't be a part of it until they change the rules from should to must. If, if you don't stand up against this, then you, you just don't deserve to be an American in my eyes. I mean, they're spitting on our flag. I was at that game. I've never been disgust so disgusted in my entire life. I was a season ticket holder for six years. I've been to so many games, I can't even, they've become a blur. I, but at the end of the day, 
you couldn't say anything against my Patriots. That day, I'm done. Uh, Anthony, uh, really well said. Really well said from the heart. Uh, thank you for that call, Anthony. That's exactly how I felt. My fondest memories, or some of my fondest memories, growing up as a child, watching football with my dad. And not just, I don't mean CFL, I mean NFL football. My dad was a big NFL football fan. And Sundays we'd go to church, my mom would, my mom would make a beautiful lunch, and we'd come back, and then my dad and I would spend the afternoons watching football together. So I loved football. Okay, I loved it. After they started kneeling and disrespecting the flag and the anthem and our vets, I said, you guys think you're bigger than America? No way. I'm done. So I have not watched a game. So, and I will continue to not watch a game. So I guess what sticks in my craw is that they don't have to be made to apologize for spitting on our flag, spitting on our anthem, spitting on those who fought and died for this country, for our freedoms and our liberties. But this guy takes a cheap shot? Okay, I'm not saying he should do it, but still, he takes a cheap shot? And, you know, it's a physical contact game? You're talking about 250, 300-pound guys, you know, rushing at each other's throats for 60 minutes? And they, like a kangaroo court, they drag him out there, and this guy's got to apologize and grovel to the media? And they're throwing stones at him? While they're praising all of these NFL players that are kneeling and saying, hmm, look at, the, look at these guys exercising their constitutional rights to protest. Oh, these guys are such heroes. They're modern-day Martin Luther Kings. Are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Doesn't fly with Jeff Cooner. Okay, let me tell you what else doesn't fly with Jeff Cooner. Congressman Conyers. So as you know, multiple women have been coming out saying that he was walking around in his underwear, in his office, he was flashing himself, he was assaulting women, grabbing women, groping women. Uh, it got so bad that it was an open secret up on Capitol Hill. I, I was waiting for this shoe to drop. When I was there, everybody knew about this. If you're a female reporter or a female staffer, do not be alone with this guy because he's going to grope and grab you. He's going. I'm not talking Billy Bush tape talking. I'm talking he's grabbing, and he doesn't stop. Well, the latest one, I think, was the one that finally broke the camel's back. A woman who worked for Conyers for many years says that they would go to church occasionally, and while they were in church, sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it's just either you laugh or you cry, that he would stroke and rub her thighs and her rear end during the, uh, during the, um, uh, during the service. So they're sitting, they're supposed to be praying, and there he is, grabbing the rear end. There he is, grabbing those thighs, going in deep into that genital crotch area. And so the latest accuser was the one that finally broke the, um, the, uh, the proverbial camel's back. She came out and said, when Representative Conyers would inappropriately touch me like this, my eyes would pop out and I would be stunned in disbelief. She wrote in an affidavit posted on Twitter, um, and so this one finally, they just said, look, there's just too many women, too many witnesses, too many corroborating stories. He also settled with another woman uh, using our money, by the way, taxpayer dollars. So the end finally came. But here is the kicker. You want to see what a corrupt swamp Washington is? Listen now to this. So instead of resigning... What does Congressman Conyers do? He retires. But he doesn't retire as in, you know, I'm serving out my term and then I just won't seek re-election. No, 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 no. Oh, we have the cut? I'm okay, in listen the process to this. of, of uh, putting my retirement plans together. I am retiring today. <laughs> my legacy can't be compromised or diminished in any way uh, by what we're going through now. This too shall pass. <laughs> it's about his legacy. 
You know, I've done so many great things. I'm such, in Nancy Pelosi's words, I'm such an icon. I'm such an icon. I'm going to retire today. I don't want this cloud hanging over me. Just, I'm going to retire, not resign. I'm retiring today. So, what's the difference between resigning and retiring? I'll tell you what it is. His pension. And that's the difference. But here is the kicker. So, as he's retiring today, i.e. effective immediately, he now says he wants to name or anoint his successor. Do you know who his successor he, want, who he wants his successor to be? His oldest boy, John Conyers III who he said in a local um, radio interview in Michigan. Oh, do we have that one? Okay, boy, Brittany, you're fa fast on the gun today. Okay, here is what he says about uh, Junior, his oldest son. Roll it, Brittany. I have a great family here, and, and especially in my oldest boy, John Conyers <laughs> III, uh, who incidentally I am... Uh, to replace me in my seat in Congress. <laughs> I mean, what is this, a family business? I mean, call me crazy. I thought we lived in a democracy. You know, I thought, like, this wasn't, you know, like, I, n this wasn't a kleptocracy. This wasn't nepotism. You know, like, we have something called elections, and it's not your seat. It's the people's seat. They own the seat. You work for them. Yeah, so, get your kid a job at the Transit Authority like a good politician. <laughs> no, you're completely right. I mean, even here they don't do that. Exactly. Here, you know, go to whatever, the Mass Transit Authority, whatever, you know, be a toll taker, whatever, the probation department. You know, you get them a job there. But what is this? like? A, so what's next? And that's for the grandson? So the son holds it till the grandson? And then the grandson holds it to the great grandson. So, okay, no, no, no. Brittany, I'm going to announce it now. I was going to wait, but I'm going to announce it now. So, in the wake of all these uh, alleged sexual allegations against the Cooner man, you know, the grabbing, the groping, that I walk around naked all the time, that I'm in my underwear all the time, <laughs> that we've been settling with your money. I, no, I'm not resigning, I'm retiring. I'm retiring effective immediately, and Ashton's going to be taking my place. So starting tomorrow, I'm no longer going to be on the air, but that's okay, because I'm passing the baton off to my son. And Ashton is going to keep up the family legacy. 617-266-6868. I swear, what a racket. 255 here on the great WRKO. Okay, I would be remiss if I didn't share this one with you. So, as you know, over the weekend, the Senate passed a tax bill. Huge victory for Trump. And I said this on my podcast yesterday, which, by the way, you can download at WRKO.com. My podcasts are every day, fresh material. If you actually look at the Senate tax cut, it is much better than the House tax bill. In fact, surprisingly, and I said this yesterday on my podcast, it's actually a good bill. I mean, you actually, yes, it cuts corporate taxes, but it also cuts tax rates a lot more than the House bill for individual, for families, for middle class people, working class people. So almost everybody is going to get a tax cut under this bill. And the kicker is, for all of us living in these blue states or high-tax blue states, it keeps all of the deductions for state and local taxes that the House bill wants to eliminate. So we're going to get a real tax cut under this bill. And on top of all of that, it knocks out the Obamacare mandate. So it really now puts Obamacare in an absolute death spiral. So it's great on Obamacare, it's great for middle working class people, it's great for small businesses, and of course it's going to lead to an economic boom because it's going to bring back so many corporations, businesses, factories back to the United States. You want to know how good this bill is? Listen now 
to Nancy the Piranha Pelosi when asked to comment on this tax bill. You got to hear it to believe it because you're not going to believe me. Roll it, Brittany. Health care, the debate on health care is life death. This is Armageddon. Uh, this is a very big deal because you know why? There's really a very hard way to come back from this. They take us further, more deeply into debt. What can you do but raise taxes? They contend that their a gift uh, to corporate America of a trillion and a half dollars, could be up to a trillion and a half dollars, will be paid for by the growth it creates. And even their own people say, nonsense, not true. Not true. So let's be truthful with the American people about that. They throw a few crumbs to the middle class, but they give with one hand, they take away in bounty with the other. And why? Because it is in their DNA. It's Armageddon. It's the end of the world. <laughs> you know what that means? I'll tell you what that means. Let me translation. The economy is going to boom. The Republicans are going to annihilate the Democrats in 2018. They're going to get annihilated. And middle working class people are going to get a real tax cut. Because for Nancy Pelosi, an economic boom and getting slaughtered in the midterms is Armageddon. It is the end of the world. I mean, so if this is the end of the world, I mean, where do you go from here? No, really, it's it's Armageddon. That's it. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence, Boston.